Hey guys, thanks for supporting the generic tech support channel. This is Tech Guy one Just wanted to thank you guys all for making this channel great. Like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. Hey guys, welcome back to Anime Edition. Now, I realize that this probably looks differently. Uh, the reason why is because the desktop background is not here and the reason why is, is I can't stretch the desktop background and have it look okay. Uh, Windows 98 was never designed to be run on a 4K 32 inch ultra wide screen display and that's what this is currently sitting on and as a result you know we don't we don't have the ability to really run 4K Windows 98. The drivers kind of work so we could stretch it but when doing that the actual desktop background with the anime stuff is probably a letter box here it maybe comes to about here in the screen to about here and across. So it kind of limits what we see anyway, and if I stretch it, it just all looks all sorts of not great. So desktop background as a green color is good. Not only that, but then I could actually see specifically what the icons say, whereas when they don't, then, you know, oh well, that's, that's kind of how it goes. So about this operating system, I dug in a little further last night. I was curious whether or not these games worked, and kind of. So you could notice how absolutely terrible the display looks. And, you know, that's Windows 98, and that's really the game. It really has nothing to do with the uh, the graphics drivers, the screen, or the video card on this particular system, even though, be it, it is virtual. Uh, it is currently set to use up to 8 gigs of resources if required. And clearly, 8 gigs, even if it is being used, is not. it's not going to help this game. So... With that said, it does work, kind of. So we could watch the pre-video here into the actual game, but eventually it's going to prompt us and say it needs the CD-ROM drive. And clear, clearly we don't have the CD for this thing. I don't even know where I would go about getting one. But the video is, is kind of neat. It's kind of a blast from the past, and if anybody remembers playing this game, please add something into the comments because it's pretty cool. There was a bunch of games during this generation, though, that were actually really good. So once the video finishes, basically we click single player, and then it tells me we have to install, insert the CD, and we hit OK. We can do multiplayer, I guess. Um, it allows you to do direct play. So if there was more than one of these machines on your network and you wanted to play Ages of Empire in a LAN party, you could use this disc to do so. But you can't play single player. Perhaps not surprisingly, after we left the game, the system blue screened and rebooted itself. Again, this is pretty common in the 9X environment without any patches. And I have a feeling once we patch the system, if we patch the system completely up to date, it would likely resolve a lot of these issues. That's why a lot of these people are in the comments that indicate, you know, you shouldn't run updates on systems. Uh, they have to be young because if you remember these older operating systems, you wanted to run all of the updates all the time because they fixed bugs, lockups, hangs, and blue screen of death errors. The new operating systems really don't have that issue anymore. I mean, it's it's rare that you're gonna see a blue screen of death situation, but with these older OSs, it was so common that, you know, you just, you looked for the update that was available, so that way you could fix the operating system in hopes that you could play something for a little longer or access things for a little longer. And that's where the generation that learned to save things frequently. So we checked out Empire, or Ages of Empire. Let's see if the Microsoft Golf Edition actually runs. Uh, yeah, I guess it would if we did an 800 by 600 in 16-bit color, which is not something I'm going to change because I don't think you'd be able to see it. Now, I know Microsoft, uh, Microsoft's Monster Truck Madness, that does work. Screwed around with that last night a little bit. So you could load the demo and you could actually see stuff. And Remember at the time, having rain in a game like this, where you had mud and things like that, it was on a different level. It was not, <laughs> I mean, that was considered high graphics at the time. <laughs> I mean, we look back at it now and you joke because of what you, you could see. I mean, if even, even if we go back five, 10 years and look at Grand Theft Auto, uh, that game's rain looks real whereas this looks like i don't even know what grains of rice on a screen but 
That was norm back then. That was a normal thing. So, yeah, Monster Truck Madness, that works. Now, Midtown Madness, I was hoping this game would actually run, but it tells me that it needs um, to detect my hardware accelerator card, and it can't find anything. Uh, VMware will support a 3D hardware accelerator, but Windows 98 doesn't know what 3D hardware acceleration is. So while the game does exist, and it's possible if this was on hardware, it would work, but it just it doesn't work here. So unfortunately, that's the one I was hoping would actually work because I, I remember playing that um, when it was new. And, uh, you know, keep in mind this is the days of PlayStation 1. Or really just PlayStation before the PS1. So I think PS1 was a branding change that took place in like Windows, or rather in uh, 2000, 2001, somewhere around that time frame. But the original PlayStation was released in 1995. The PS1 introduced additional graphics configurations. It slimmed down the console a little bit. But they were backwards compatible. The PS1 and the PS would play the same same games. They just upconverted the older games so they looked a little better. Because video cards got a little better by 2000. Not much, but a little better. Um, this is right around that same time frame. So this is Microsoft's version, and this is really before the Xbox even existed, which I think the original Xbox came around in around 2001. So, you know, that was uh, that was game changing though. The Xbox, the original Xbox, when that came out, that blew the PlayStation out of the water as far as the uh, the visibility, the graphics were concerned. Now it was not as good of a system as far as games are concerned or longevity. And none of them really have been. I mean, the Red Ring of Death issue on the Xbox 360. I, I used to buy those consoles by, you know, the hundreds off of eBay and fix them and resell them just because they would trash. They had the worst freaking chips ever. They used to bake themselves, warp the boards, pop the, the, the uh, solder off the boards, which would cause the Red Ring of Death issue in a lot of them. Then you had other ones where the uh, stupid CD-ROM drives would fail, and you had problems with the uh, the soldering on the uh, connectors for the uh, cooling system, where the fans would actually uh, not turn on because the solder would fail, which would cook the board and cause the actual Red Ring of Death issue. But you didn't know because it was a small source. A lot of the times, a lot of my friends, after I went through about 15 to 20 of them on doing repairs, we just used a, a hole saw and drilled a hole through the top of it, and mounted a CPU fan on the top of it, and then hardwired it to the board to solve the issue with the uh, the issue with the the actual uh, solder popping. I had a couple friends also that used the I think they were called the Noctura coolers for uh, CPUs. And we made custom mounts and actually mounted them to the boards so that way they would actually cool because those cases were too small for the actual hardware. They eventually fixed it. I mean, it took a good five or six years before they fixed it, but. And I think the pushing point for them was the big box uh, lawsuit that took place, which is the kid that created a GoFundMe site. And he, I think he actually got close to $10,000 from the GoFundMe site. And they rented a tractor trailer because it used to be Microsoft would repair the Xbox and send it back in the same box. So we had a box truck delivered to Microsoft, just the, the container with the Xbox on the inside of it just out of sheer aggravation of all the times that he had red ring of death issues and was without his console for weeks. And they had to ship it back to him. And after that took place, probably about a month later, they had a fix that permanently fixed the issue. But you could look into that. There's uh, there's probably still exists. I think it was called the, uh, the big box project for the Xbox 360 red ring of death. So what else we got on here? I think we have a uh, pinball I remember correctly, I kind of looked into that last night, screwing around with it, and that does work. This is before Maxis was bought out by Electronic Arts. This was kind of when they were their own company. This is when they really had uh, this particular option for pinball. They had, um, oh great, like SimCity, SimAnt, um, SimCopter. Right, they had a lot of Sim games, and all the Sim games were actually well-developed. They may not have had the greatest graphics, but the gameplay was really solid. Whereas now... Uh, if you've played like the latest version of like SimCity, it's it's pretty awful. There's a lot of different ones out there that are actually a lot better. Uh, but I'd say SimCity 2000 is probably one of the, the better ones, or even SimCity 3000. Um, with that said, pinball works. So what I ended up doing is actually just grabbing the shortcut and copying it over so I don't have to keep clicking on the start menu. So we've checked out Ages of Empire, Microsoft Golf. We looked at Midtown Madness. We looked at Monster Truck Madness. Uh, we took a look at the pinball uh, arcade, 
the Maxis version. I don't know if the Microsoft version, I'm assuming the Microsoft version works. I actually haven't looked at this one yet, but it appears that this works. And these would have been really good graphics for Windows 98 back in the day. I wonder if it would have looked as good as it does now on this particular system if we were still running an AGP slotted card, something with 128 megs of uh, video memory. Just keep in mind the system's allocated for 8 gigs of video resources. So while I don't think this operating system would ever see 8 gigs of video, it is an option. So that's kind of cool. It does, it does work. It does load. And we have a puzzle collection. Got me. So it looks like there is a variety of puzzles that you could use in here, and that does work too. So the gaming situation does work. Let's get an IP address on this thing and let's do a Nessa scan. If not for any other reason, just for questions as to whether or not it will look, what what it sees. I mean, what will we see? Um, how bad does it actually look? And the other question is, is can we scan it at all? Because keep in mind, it, it doesn't support modern protocol. So I don't have a wind server connected to this network. I have a wind server facing outbound. So if we wanted to test it on the internet, winds would work but I don't have a wind server configured for my internal LAN configuration, and I don't know that this is gonna work for DNS. We can use IP address, but again, I don't know if the TCP IP connection is gonna support the encryption requirements. Um, I don't know if we could pass through the authentication based off of the uh, configuration off the Nessus scan configuration. So the Nessus set system itself has a certain um, requirement for authentication. So it does work for Windows 2000. I know it works for Windows NT servers, but I don't believe it's gonna work on the 9X environment. I could be wrong, but it's something that we'll have to actually scan this and see what comes back, if it actually sees anything. So let me get that set up and then we'll jump back in the Nessus scanner and see what this actually looks like. Okay guys, so we're back over on our uh, Nessus scanner and we did run a scan for Windows 98 and Anime Edition. So let's dig in. So we have eight infos and one low. I'm going to specifically check the low to see what that is. So that's probably not ideal. Um, Etherleak, that was a thing that existed long, long ago. And we can see it published 2003. So I'm guessing that if we actually patch the system, this would go away. And the rest of the stuff that's in here is pretty standard. So, I mean, realistically, we have nine infos, which is actually not bad for a Windows 98 system. But keep in mind, Windows 98 is small. There's really nothing to it. So, all the vulnerabilities that we'd find in Windows 2000, XP, Windows Vista, Windows 7, 881, 10, 11, they don't actually exist as code in this operating system. So, the fact that we really only have eight infos and one low is pretty good. That's not bad. I actually expected it to be far, far worse. So keep in mind in the infos, if you notice, we have a 10, which is considered a critical, but I have that whitelisted. And the reason why is because it's an unsupported operating system, but we know that already. We're scanning it on purpose, knowing that it's an unsupported operating system. So it's not really a critical situation for us since we are purposely running that version of Windows. Now, when you run a network scan with this software, you want this turned on, right? You want to see it as critical because you want to know if there's anything out on the network that isn't supported any longer. But when you're running an itemized scan directly against one single machine, it's not necessary to have that as a critical. We know that it's a Windows 98 system. And we also know that we have our OS security patch assessment failed. Well, obviously, right? Because we don't have patches installed on this system. There are no updates on it. So that's to be expected. Realistically, this really isn't all that bad. Now, if we compare it to like a traditional out-of-the-box Windows 98 SE system, I don't know what the difference is. I, I don't have one built to actually test it. Um, I've had them in the past. Reality is, is that it's the type of operating system that would never really see the internet ever again. It's something that I would use maybe just to play DOS-based games or something to that effect. But even with that said, generally, if I was going to do like DOS-based games, I just use DOSBox. Or if I was going to uh, run it as an operating system, I'd probably just use free DOS. I don't, I don't think I would go this route to run DOS-based games. Uh, so with that said, uh, what do you guys think? Do you think that Windows 98 
should be something that we should attempt to secure the eight infos and the one low. Do you think that I should spend the time and actually install the updates on this? Do you think that there's any use for this operating system outside of just the fact that it's a beautiful time capsule? Leave a comment below. All right, guys, thanks for watching.